to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the gateway to design of experiments and why one factor testing on your manufacturing processes is a useless thing to do. I know that one factor testing is what everybody thinks is the correct way to learn how a process works, but we're going to talk about how limited that technique actually is. So let's get the title up. We're going to talk about one factor one factor tests okay now we're going to use i'm going to use the catapult uh, this is what i use in my workshops so this is your manufacturing process effectively you can see that it's got several um several settings on it so this is just like a, a manufacturing machine a molding machine a 3d printer um, I don't know, a, a, a paint plant. You've all got adjustments on the machine. It's usually computer controlled. So you can adjust everything all the time, everywhere. So there's lots of things you can do. So we can adjust the pullback angle. I can adjust the cup height. I can adjust the elastic position. I can adjust the pin position here. I can adjust the stop angle there. So I think that's five adjustments on the catapult. Now, one factor tests, what you're taught to do is keep everything constant and just move one thing at a time. So in my classes, I get the class to keep everything constant and then fire at several different pullback angles. So you can see a class here going through the data collection phase of that particular process. And then what I get them to do is to plot a scatter diagram so we get this it's angle across the bottom uh, and I think they're going somewhere between about maybe 150 and I think they go full scale deflection on the angle which is about 186 so they do various tests different angles this is distance so this is the y this is the x and I usually get them to do 10 data points yeah so that's my instruction to them 10 data points and then out of this analysis of course comes an equation and the equation might look something like this. Um, let's have a look. We did this the other day and it was approximately 0.5. something like that. Okay. So this is your angle.
this is your distance. And then what I do is I give them a target. So the other day I asked a group of people to hit 65 inches. They put 65 in here, resolved the equation through. I think the angle that uh, the equation told them to use was 165 degrees. And then I get them to test the model. So effectively this target is always somewhere where they haven't collected data. So we've gone 65, back calculated to 165 degrees, and then they test it, and this happens. So you can see someone here, they put the setting in, they've used a stop so that they definitely have 165 degrees on the catapult, and then they fire the catapult at the target, which is where that ring of tape is sitting, and the ball does this. Now at that point, of course, they are super excited about this technique. But let's think about the limitations of what you've done, first of all. The first thing is, I've asked them to work too hard, all right? So why did I ask them to do 10 points? Now I only asked them to do 10 points to, to make this point with them. I didn't need 10 points. What's the minimum I could have got away with? Well, I could have got away with two, of course. And if I was going to pick two points, which two points would you pick? Probably the high and the low point. So I only needed two points. By the way, for those of you that say I need three points, the final test here is the third point. So when I do the, the confirmation test, if of course we hit the target, as we just did in that video, most fantastically, by the way, that was only possible because of great process controls, then this is the third point. This is your confirmation test, but you don't do it in the original data collection. So two points and a third point to confirm. Okay, so that's the first thing. We were working way too hard. But the second thing is this. Look, I don't have just one variable. On my catapult I have five I have the elastic position the pin position the stop angle and the cop height as well as the pullback angle so let's assume let's assume that I did a test now a one factor test for the pin position here so I test high and I test low and then I do a confirmation test with one of the middle values so this time of course Let's say I get another equation. So I've now got y equals 2.48 minus 136.92. This, sorry, there should be an x in there. The x now, of course, is the pin position. And the y, of course, is still the distance. So I have an equation for the pin, I have an equation for the angle. So if I only move the angle, I know what's going on. If I only move the pin, I know what's going on. But that isn't what you do, is it? That isn't what you do on your manufacturing machines. You wanna move both the pin and the angle at the same time and still know what's going on. Can I use these two equations to do that? And don't forget, it wouldn't be two equations. It would be five because I'd have an equation for the elastic position, an equation for the cup position, an equation for the stop angle as well. I'd end up with five separate equations. Can I figure out what's going on with five separate equations? No. So it's, a, it's an enjoyable exercise to do in the class. The groups feel fantastic to land the ball in a cup from eight feet away, but it's a completely useless technique. It's especially useless when maybe the two variables aren't the pin position and the angle. Let's say you're dealing with a, with a molding machine. Okay. Let's say we're only gonna move two variables and the two variables we're gonna move 
of injection speed and barrel temperature. In other words, the temperature of the plastic and the speed that we inject the plastic. Now there's a problem with this. So if I get an equation for this and then I get an equation for this, so I only move this, one factor test, I only move the injection speed. Then I do a one factor test, I only move the barrel temperature. There's a problem. When you inject faster, what do you do? You drive the temperature higher. So these two affect one another. So if you test them on their own, that's useless because you don't see the interaction. Now, what would a DOE get you to do? Now, first of all, a DOE gets you to use this technique and it gets you to go low and it gets you to go high and then it fills the gap with the equation. It fills the gap with maths. So let's say injection speed was going to be at five and 10 and barrel temperature was going to be 200 to 220. High and low, high and low. What would a DOE get you to do? It would get you to do this. You'd go injection speed, 5, 5, 10, 10. Temperature, 200, 220, 200, 220. So you're moving both the variables at the same time. You are doing it in a specific pattern. And what this allows you to do is to create an equation where both the speed and the temperature are in the same equation. And now when I move these two, I know exactly what's going to happen. And by the way, if we go back to the catapult and it was five variables, I could have created an equation with the pullback angle, the cup height, the elastic position, the pin position, and the stop angle. They would all be in the same equation. And now I know how my process works. I can move all five variables at the same time and predict what's going to happen. This thing is useless. It's a lovely idea. It sounds like the most professional way to work, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. It isn't any use to you. Have you ever noticed you've never created equations for your processes? You know why? Because it doesn't work. Do a DOE. That is a designed experiment. It is a pattern that allows this equation to be formed. There is a pattern for three factors, a pattern for four factors, a pattern for five factors, and it allows the full equation to be developed for your manufacturing processes. You want to be using DOE, design of experiments, because only design of experiments gives you practical and useful process knowledge, and then you can use it to make more money.